Uh, this is the showroom for OMA, Oswald's Mill Audio, uh -huh. and, and we're in Dumbo. Uh -huh. And we've been here a real long time, uh -huh. 27 years. That's the showroom's uh, 15 years old. So. It's beautiful. Thank really you. Really gorgeous. Yeah. So this is what we, what we make. Yeah. Uh, we're sort of an outlier in high-end audio in that we make not just the loudspeakers. As you can see, they're horn-loaded loudspeakers mm -hmm. primarily. They're all really high-efficiency loudspeakers. They're all made out of real wood, solid wood, um, by hand. The wood's from Pennsylvania. It's not from some tropical rainforest. And the horns are conical horns, and, and we're the only company in the world that makes high-end conical horn loudspeakers. How, so those how are, are those different? Those than... are straight-sided. So like that horn over there is, is, is sort of looks kind of like a squished oval. Uh -huh. It's called a stadium, actually, that shape. Okay. That's conical, meaning the sides are straight. You can put a ruler in there. And these okay. are round and that's square, but they're all conical, so they're straight sided. And all the other horns are curved. Right. And, like an avant garde. And they avant garde, Cesaro, Acapella, they're, they're all curved. So, and all the horns in PA, mm -hmm. uh, they're all curved exponential, hyperbolic, parabolic, track tricks, the cleach, lots of different flare names and, and flare types. Mm -hmm. They're all curved, these are straight, they're all totally different from this. The sound, the physics, the way the, the wave leaves the horn, and most importantly, the way it sounds, mm. the way it operates with what's called constant directivity. So we make the speakers, and then we make the amplification yeah. for the speakers, which is low-powered triode tube amplification. So the range of amplifiers we make, they're all two chassis minimum design. So the power supply is on one chassis and the signal's on the other, for example, on this amp. Mm -hmm. Now that's quite unusual because the industry works on monoblock designs, which is right. actually a big mistake. Um, you want to have the power supply isolated from the signal. Monoblocks goes back to when mono went to stereo and you went down to your, you know, your audio dealer and said, I need another one. And they were very happy to sell two, two of the same thing. Okay. Um, I once had a nice conversation with Chip Fisher, who was Avery Fisher's son. And he said that his father was so happy when stereo came out because he got to sell twice as many amps. Um, so this is a 10 watt amp, for example. This is the same amp, but with different tubes. And that's the medium Oops. power amp we make. This is the lowest powered amp, still two chassis. This is only two and a half watts. Um, we use also tubes that no one else uses. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do that for a reason, but that's a long story. This is what you'll be listening to. This is the biggest amp we make, and this weighs over 200 pounds, and still it's only an 18 watt amp. Okay, so we make the amplification, we make the phono stage, the preamplification. Also, the amps are all integrated in the sense you don't need a preamp. So they're big, they're expensive, but you don't need a preamp. They have enough gain. They have the gain built in. Why do we do that? It's actually really simple. That's the way I want to have it. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we could make a preamp and then we'd sell another box mm -hmm. and we'd make more money, but that that sucks as an idea. That's a really bad way to do it. Yeah. It's better to put everything into the amplifier, cables, the whole complexity of it, the gain architecture. Uh, so we're kind of like not doing things the way the high end audio industry mm -hmm. does it. Mm -hmm. Then we make the source in, in the sense of we make analog, we make turntables. So this is the newest thing that we're doing, which is the, the techniques, the new techniques SP10R. Mm -hmm which is really the world's best direct drive turntable right now in this 150 pound cast iron plinth system that we make. And this is the new Schroeder BA tone arm. Oh, wow, yeah, I've heard about it. Which is seen it. fantastic, it's... which was designed for us. And this is something that only we have. It's a magnetic rotating head shell um, on the BA that's an option. Mm -hmm. So this is a tone arm. BA stands for broadcast arm. It goes back to arms like the Gray Research 108 from the 50s and early 60s, uh -huh. which Stereophile actually Oops. just published a piece uh, where they said that that was the best arm that they had ever heard back in the day. Mm -hmm. So 
we make all of these things. We make the audio furniture. This rack system uh -huh. oh, wow. um, can be any length. We make this. This is solid Pennsylvania walnut. We make it with with cast iron legs or aluminum. This, the shelves ride on an elastomer so that there's no contact with the ground. Hmm. We do this because the kind of customer that comes in here, they want a complete system. They don't want to have to be shopping right. or yeah. mix and matching. Mm -hmm. They 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 they're not audiophiles in the sense that they want to play around with this component and. They just want to hear music mm -hmm. in the way they hear it here. And then it's a question about, okay, well, you know, uh, how, how big do I want it to be? You know, the smallest speaker we make is the mini. Then you have the monitor, which we also make a professional studio version of. And all the way up to this, which is the biggest thing we make, you know, the, uh, the Imperia, which is a, it's a big system. Yeah. Um, right. You know, it's, it's kind of like you go to a Salve Row tailor and you say, uh, I, I'd, I'd like a jacket, please. And they, they measure you, and they, they give you the jacket and exactly the right fabric and mm -hmm. fit for you. Mm -hmm. But you might say, well, I, I want an entire wardrobe. I want the shirts. I want the pants, the socks. And you, you don't have to worry, does it all work together? Right. It's done. It's done. Yeah. Down to the cables, down to the, the cartridge, everything. So one stop, and then you can just enjoy music. Well, there you go. So. I think you've done it. Jonathan, it's a vision. It's a thing. It's a vision thing. Well, it's definitely not like any um, aspect of, of the high end uh, in terms of audio that, that I know of because, you know, what we make is ultra high efficiency so that it's supernatural sounding, effortless. Will play as loud as you want with zero. It's, it's kind of like a car that goes 900 miles an hour. <laughs> You're never going to put your foot on the gas. And I look at, at other high end manufacturers, their speakers. It's kind of like you buy a Ferrari or a McLaren and you open up the hood and there's a lawnmower engine inside. You know, <laughs> you put your foot on the gas and it's like, eh! and then it's like, well, what? You know, it's nothing there. Um, what we're doing also is trying to make stuff that it's the coolest looking thing in your house. Because if it's this big and it's this expensive, if it's not the coolest looking thing, right. we're, we're dead, okay? You know, if, if this thing is not playing and it's in your living room and you don't love it and people don't come in and go like, I want to hear that, right. we don't, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's all of a piece. It's about acoustic engineering. It's about the sound that that produces. And then it's about the craftsmanship, the materials, the natural wood, the slate, the cast metal, all, all that in an industrial design that you want to have, you know, as a piece of, mm. of design or, I never use the word art, people use the word art with our stuff, but it's, it's, really, it's really good design and it's form follows function. You know, if you look at those speakers there, yeah, th these speakers are a really good example. So people look at this and they go, oh, like, you know, you made, a, you made like a butterfly thing. Well, the way this speaker started out, in the 1920s, motion picture theater speaker systems, they were challenged. They had to produce a lot of sound with very little power. Absolutely. And the way they did that, one way they did that was, well, horn loading everything. And the other way they did that was by sticking big wooden baffles next to, you know, okay. attached to the speakers, which okay. basically produces a, a larger source and, and increases the efficiency, especially for low, low frequency. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make a speaker with two 15-inch woofers that has a huge hit at mm -hmm. 100 hertz. Mm -hmm. There isn't anything like this. These are identical woofers. Um, there's no speaker like that made today in the high end. And then we, we wanted to use baffles to further increase the sound source. And my industrial designer, who knows nothing about audio, we gave him the bill, said, look, hey, here's how big these baffles have to be. And he said, well, can they be this shape or this uh, shape? Uh. And the result was the speaker. He said, well, can I make it like this? And I said, well, at these frequencies, 
The sound doesn't see those shapes, so yes, you can do that. Mm -hmm. And the result is this, which, you know, people could look at this and say, well, you did that for a decorative reason. Well, no, we did that because of acoustical engineering. Mm -hmm. So if you take those, those wings off, the speaker sounds completely different. It doesn't sound as good. This is a speaker that I, I've gotten tired of trying to explain what the hell is going on with this thing because no one takes this <laughs> seriously, right? They, they really think, things, oh, how nice. You made a sculpture and you put speakers in it. Like, it is, wow. You but know. it is really And they, they're like, really? And you drop the needle on, on a record uh -huh. uh, and people go like, oh my, oh my God, I've never... I didn't even know that was possible. So they are cast iron. They're cast iron. They're a quadratic the diffuser. The shapes and the, the size and the form of the shapes, uh -huh. it's a quadratic diffuser. Uh -huh. You see those in studios, on the walls, on the ceiling. They're designed to break up sound waves, to diffract and diffuse the sound wave. They're, they're doing that in a studio to break up a reflection on a wall. Mm -hmm. Here, they are functioning in that way as the sound launches from this baffle surface, mm -hmm. which is a wide baffle, unlike speakers today, which are all these narrow yeah, 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 things, yeah. very bad. Right. Don't do that. <laughs> bad, bad idea, bad, bad. bad, bad. Wide, then the sound wave sees these shapes and mm -hmm. diffracts mm -hmm. at 500 pounds per side. This is not vibrating. No. That's good. That's good, inert. So what you have is and this is, a, this is well over 100 dB, one watt, one meter. It's an ultra-efficient open baffle speaker that is incredibly lifelike with the, you know, this is really the world's with best. With a ribbon tweeter. With a huge custom-made, ultra-high-efficiency ribbon tweeter. Uh -huh. It's made for us in Serbia. Uh -huh. That's like, uh, I think it's about 110 dB at 10K. Yikes. Which is, you know, crazy. Um, without this, this couldn't exist. This is an amazing, people like Ben Folds, this is like, what, this is what he, this is his favorite. Yeah, okay. um, so, you know, it's very confusing because you see pictures of this stuff, you see it online, you go like, oh, that's the company that makes the cool looking stuff, but you know, that can't sound good because they can't possibly make it sound amazing and look like that. I hear uh -huh. that all the time from uh -huh. audiophiles. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, we have to have the ugliest box because if you spent $100,000 on a really ugly box, mm -hmm. it has to be really good, because who would be stupid enough it's like to Smucker's, buy a $100,000 ugly thing that doesn't work well? With a name like Smucker's, it has to be good. Well, there's, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of schmucks in this world, okay? <laughs> and, and so um, all of our stuff is, is really acoustically engineered first. Then we try and figure out how to make it look like something that you want to have yeah, in your house. Yeah, the art of sound, so, so. to speak. <laughs> I Couldn't keep resist. away from the A word. Sorry. I keep away from the art. A word, okay. Well, you know, people confuse art and design. Design, the difference between design and art is design has to function. Design has to do something, it has to do it properly. If you have a chair and it's not a, you know, a, a good chair is defined by being able to sit in it, uh -huh. being comfortable, and then, then liking the way it looks. Right. That's, that's the design function of a chair. Right. Once a chair becomes art, nobody cares about whether you sit in it or not. It's art. Right. Art doesn't have a function. Right. That's the definition of art. So okay. we don't make art. No. I mean, if people say, oh, OMA, that's art. Great, I'll take the compliment. But that's not what we do. What we do is we design stuff to work at the highest possible level acoustically so that when you listen to it, you think that there's nothing even playing, you know. We don't we don't design stuff to 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 get people's attention or or for looks. We just try to make it look as good as we can. So. Awesome. When you when you're dealing with shapes like these shapes, though, it's not that hard. They're just really interesting shapes. Yeah, you know, they're, I'd say. they're shapes that are very evocative. You know, you kind of look at these things and you, you know what they're supposed to do intuitively, and in, you know, in your gut without anyone having to write it out. Uh -huh. so. yeah. I think we're good. Uh, okay. Thanks, I'm, Jonathan. Sure. I guess today is Jonathan Weiss from Oswald. I think we Mill. need to do one on, one more thing? on, 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 on different turntable, because uh, everybody else makes uh, belt drive. No, that's another day. But you know, everyone makes belt drive turntables. Mm -hmm. You should come back, we'll do the difference of idler and direct drive turntables. Okay. 
To be continued. I, I can think of a whole bunch it's of a different series. ones. I, I, you want, I don't know. You want to be, you, know, uh, you want a seven point series. The viewers clearly. want to know. I know. Do your viewers I can hear them. Do they want to know? I hear them right now, clamoring. Right. You, you got to vote. You got with those comments on, guys. you, you yeah, guys comments. do yeah. online. Yeah. Say, I want to hear that. Yeah. I want to know about that. No, yeah, so, cool. And then, then we'll do it, right, well, Steve? The, the viewers will decide. It's, it's, this is still a democracy, right? Uh, maybe. Country. I don't know. By the time this runs, it may not be. You know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway. All thanks. right. Well, I mean, happy to oblige. All right. Thanks, Jonathan. My okay. name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show coming to you from Dumbo, Brooklyn. See you again real soon, guys. Bye-bye.